city with my tea Smoking, drinking, doing our own thing Tell me what you into, what you bring We gon' be a problem cause I see We ain't ever going home I got your cards laid. I already shuffled them uh, to give us more time to get this thing going. Um, I know I missed you guys in October. I apologize profusely, Aries. I know you just do not appreciate that. Um, we'll try not to let it happen again, but hey, here we are. Welcome to Frequency Real Radio. Um, I hope you guys are making the most of the Scorpio new moon energy, doing your rituals, um, doing your, doing your mantras, doing your ask, asking for what it is that you need, what you want, what you, what you want to, uh, let die and what you want to, uh, transform and create. So, you know, uh, do all of those things to bring that Scorpio energy into your life. Aries, if you haven't, yeah, this is Aries. Yeah. If you haven't already. Uh, the new moon does bring about new starts. It's a new, it's a new journey, a new start to get to where you want to go to create things and bring into fruition, you know, uh, what you really want in your life. So just, you know, do your research on the new moon and Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio is a very powerful sign. Uh, the natural ruler of the eighth, eighth house, death, uh, regeneration, rebirth, creativity, and things like that. And, um, what was I going to say? That's why it's such a big transformative energy when you have that new moon and you want to bring something into fruition. Scorpio is a powerful sign to do that. And what I wanted to say was the phoenix that rises from the ashes. So Scorpio really does have, have that power and that energy um, that Scorpio brings has the power to help you uh, rise uh, like the phoenix from the ashes into uh, this new light or these new things that you want to be a part of. So Aries, coming into the month, I feel like that's exactly what you need to do. You need to, you need that energy to rise and maybe to come out of a like an unauthoritative funk. I mean, Aries, you guys are used to being pretty much the authority on a lot of things. Um, Aries, it, it rules the head. Aries is a smart sign and everything like that. But I'm thinking at this point in the month, there's just some things that have got you feeling a uh, not so it, it's got you maybe feeling in retreat and not so much the authority on it all. And I say that because you have the emperor in reverse and uh, the emperor upright represents Aries. It's the male Aries energy, but you know, I'm, I'm not a stickler to gender on the cards. I do believe in certain situations they really do represent those gender energies. This is a love relation, love and relationship reading. If anything else creeps in, you know, we'll talk about it, but generally that, that emperor, it is the, um, the male energy, but it does represent the Aries. So if you're a woman, this could uh, refer to you, or this could be an energy like that in your life. If you know anybody that's an Aries, uh, sun, moon, or rising, or if you have someone, someone has Aries in their chart, or they're just carrying those Aries traits, um, right now, but I, at Aries, because this reading is directed towards you, I feel like that's more your energy, especially because this is four Aries. And then this, the, uh, the four comes out. I mean, the emperor, which is the four card comes out, you know, I really feel like that's your energy Aries. And it's just saying, you don't feel like that king or that queen upon your throne. You know, you're not feeling uh, you, you've been through a lot of things if you, and you've brought a lot of things with you to that point. And usually when I see that emperor card out right to me, that's what fuels that, um, a surety that sits in the, um, emperors it, that resonates through that card. And that sits at the seat of his character. Just like if you know any, um, areas and I, I really have the male archetype, um, in mind here, but it's, it really is, uh, resonates through out with the female areas that are, um, the height of their power or that are really manifesting their power. That, that emperor, he is like the knower of all things. He can advise 
whether it be, you know, he is the father figure. He can advise whether it be on matters of battle, matters of family. You know, that Aries um, has all this life experience because he is, he is traveled. He is accomplished. He has been through many things. And that's why he sits there as the emperor. Nothing can put a chink in his armor. And he, he's a very wise, um, wise and stable character. And having the emperor in reverse just means something's kind of knocking you off of that throne or something just does not have you feeling like your normal uh, self this month. And it's not to say anything um, as far as Aries knows it all and Aries doesn't make mistakes. But uh, uh, in my eyes, Aries is a type of sign, whether they're sure about something or not, or whether they, well, maybe I shouldn't say sure, but whether something is, comes out right or wrong or whether um, Aries makes mistakes, they still go with what it is that they that they feel that they think of that they want to do so they charge ahead and all of it is lessons learned that make them the greater person that they are and you might not be feeling like that right at this moment either within yourself and that could because it's a love and relationship reading and that could be affecting your relationship or maybe something like that is going on with the partner but like I said I feel like it's an inner thing for the Aries and it's 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 more of a inner thing because you also got the four of swords so um right there there's two fours so in in the number cards they correlate up to the major arcana so the numbers in the minor ar arcana reflect back to the eight major arcana so they represent those same things so a four of swords is going to carry the same energy as the major arcana, um, the emperor, which is the number four. Uh, the three, what's the three? I believe that's the empress. So the three of swords is going to carry energy back to the empress. The three of uh, cups is going to carry energy back to the empress. The four of cups is going to carry energy back to the emperor. So all of uh, remnants of that major arcana, uh, themes of that major arcana card can be, are reflected in the same number of the suits. So it just tells me something's not feeling right inside of the um, emperor that doesn't allow you to be yourself and you're in a period where you kind of feel like you got to retreat or you got to take some downtime to really think about things. Maybe it really is a physical not feeling good because when the emperor is upright, I mean, he's in good shape. He's the one that is athletic, in good shape. He has that that body that was made for war he has a warrior's body they're cut out for the battle you know areas of fighters they are built for the battle they are built for the fight so under all that armor is a soldier you know what i mean and, and right now the soldier is really in retreat because you don't feel like uh yourself and you don't feel like that you're be really um, creating all that it is that you want to create and all that's in you to create and Aries is a doer as well and I and I use these experiences and these references from people I know that embody these energies you know Aries are goers and they are doers and you have the magician in, in reverse it just tells me either within yourself or something within a relationship or has to do it I, I have a strong sense, so I'm using three decks. I'm sorry I didn't state them. I'm using Tarot the Complete Kit. I'm using um, the Dorian Virtue Past Life deck and the Dorian Virtue um, Romance Oracles deck. So in my tarot cards, I feel like it's a lot of um, inner energy with the Aries. At, actually, I feel like the whole reading is inner energy with the Aries. So I don't see a lot as far as with a romantic partner, even though I'm sure when you listen to these readings and you tell them to you, which is what people have to do, you guys, the cards are open to your interpretation. You're going to find things. These are general readings. I don't know every person that's watching and listening. So it's just energy that comes to me that was meant for you to be here today and for you to he hear this. But when you hear parts of the story, you have to tailor it for yourself. We're not in a personal reading. So, you know, the energy here is it's definitely about partnerships whether these are romantic and this is like i tell everybody on the love readings love and relationships have to do with any of the areas in your life where love and relationship would apply so that could be your your romance partner that could be your children your family if you have a career that you love i mean there you do have a relationship with your job so it can run a gamut and i feel like a lot of the energy in this reading areas is really based in the self and it ties into your relationships with other Others. So whether this be your your um, relatives or your significant other or your uh, I don't see a lot of strong child things, but maybe things from your past and things like that because it 
whatever the issues are that don't have you um, feeling like yourself, which I definitely believe it ties into your past. A lot of things having to do with religious factors, maybe the way you were brought up, maybe certain beliefs you have and certain um, things you want to do, certain things you have a love for. So maybe it, there could be a partner or something where the religious um, factors aren't lining up and it's really got you turned on your head. Are you thinking of maybe changing your, your religion or your spirituality based on this partnership? Or does this, these thoughts of what's going on with you change or make a, a partner question how you feel because you have the religious factors and, and you have the for, forgiving and learning card. So it actually the Doreen virtue cards go like this religious factors, heart to heart conversations and forgiving and learning. So it's just meaning, um, there are some things, spirituality and religion play a heavy role in whatever you have a love for, whoever you have a love for. And a lot of it has to do with past experiences, experiences. So experiences from childhood, experiences from yesteryear. And it's all about forgiving and learning. Um, I was, I was thinking this earlier when I did a reading for somebody after the reading was all over, because you know, I don't, you know, to, after I, we do readings or after I do readings, there's still a lot of things that go on in my mind. It's hard to kind of cut it off. And if there's a lot of things that you could say, I try to make, it, it was a quick reading. So I try to make them kind of quick and get everything in, but it's just so many things that come, uh, when you ponder, when you think on the cards and when you, your intuition comes to you about the cards. But, um, I was thinking for this person, um, to, to tell them that, or was thinking for this person and I, I knew they would feel it through the reading and hope they would feel it through the reading that your experiences are not you. Our experiences in life, they shape us and they mold us and they, they are a collective of the greater good. But your experience is not you. It does not necessarily, it, well, I don't want to say it doesn't define you because it has a part of developing who you are to become. But it is just an experience. We are all here um, to have various experiences that we chose to have. So anything from the past is an experience that is meant for learning and developing of the person, of the soul that you are going to be. But it is not who you are. An experience does not ex ex define who you are. If um, something happened to someone, they got mugged, they got raped, or they got hurt or they hurt someone or you know what I mean? It doesn't make you necessarily that person. The experience is about what you go through, how you learn from it, how you grow from it, and then what you do. Now, if you stay in that experience and we keep doing the same things over and over, then that definitely defines you and it, it can turn you into someone you don't want to be. But the point is you have to look at things you have been through in your life uh, with romantic partners, with family, with children and things like that. And you ha we have to learn to put those things in perspective, to have forgiveness from for ourselves and others and to learn from those things because that's what we are here for. That's the whole, um, that's a big part, I believe, of the point of why we even um, incarnate on this earth um, is to have these experiences, you know, so we have deeper understandings of um, intellect, feeling, emotions, human connection, human bonds, how we all are one because um, one part of a, of, um, a collective affects the whole. And I, I think a lot of times we don't see that. Uh, we Sometimes we think we're just individuals and we're just here on an individual basis, but it really is a much bigger scheme. So um, it's time to have some heart-to-heart -heart conversations with your love partners, with your family, with yourself, and just let them know what's going on or make amends and ha and forgive and learn from the things um, that you've been through in the past. Religious experiences that you've been um, in, through in the past because it has put you here right now listening to this video on your spiritual path to a higher ascension. And... Um, what what you what I feel like you're gonna be going through for November or where you may feel at at in November is just um bounds. You may feel like you're bound and you you're not really sure which way to move. And I meant to say for Aries at the beginning of the video, just a theme or something to think about this month is blocking out the noise. That was uh the message I got for Aries before I came onto the video. It was blocking out the noise. Um keeping the lights bright, 
but keeping the noise down. So whatever that means um, for, for you guys out there, if it means anything um, to you at all. So um, and the Eight of Swords um, may have you feeling bound in some way in November. Um, bound to maybe some of these past beliefs. Bound to um, being able to forgive or not forgive or have certain conversations with certain people. You know, really do that this month, Aries, because it's about getting you in a place um, where you know that you can trust your inner wisdom, your third eye, your intuition more than maybe other people, more than things you've been taught. And, um, you know, you can show that to other people and maybe that's what the keep the lights bright have to do with it, you know, is you let your light shine Aries and, um, use that inner wisdom. You know what I mean? Not to be, not to be turned upside down or not to have any situations or, um, conventional ways of thinking or con conventional thoughts, even from other people kind of get you in a box where you feel like, um, you, you just have to, you're out of it and you can't express yourself. You can't communicate or you can't create. You know what I mean? And and, and just um, keeping the noise down is really going within the, your self areas to make yourself strong, to be able to create, to break whatever bonds or whatever ties you have. And this could even be to some of the religious factors because you have the Eight of Swords. And Eight of Swords are bound and it's being tied and it's being held to something. And it's a lot of like on the, the tarot card, there's a lot of murky waters there. So it's also emotional to me too. I feel like it's a, 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 a just everything's kind of muddy. Some things aren't clear. There's a lot of noise and you feel cut off. You feel, feel bound. You feel like you don't know which way to move or you can't move, but you can because the Eight of Swords, in the Eight of Swords cards and the Rider Waite, I'm not using the Rider Waite, but I'm referencing the meaning and the image when because that's known to a lot of people. You guys may not know these images on the Tarot, the Complete Kit. Um, deck. So in both the magic magician card and in the eight of swords, there's a lack of communication or the communications have hurt. So therefore nobody wants to communicate anymore. Both cards speak of having what you need and being able to release, being able to break feet free, being able to create, but, you, but the, the, the fear, the lack is from with you. It's not from an outside entity. That's what the magician, because you have the magician in reverse, that's what the magician represents. You have the tools, but what are you going to do with it? it? You can have all the power in the world, but it's about what you do with it. How you cultivate it, what you're going to do with it. And um, don't let whatever you've been through or whatever you're feeling right now lead you to feel um, tied up or bound because you can break that. Nothing's holding you back but yourself, Aries, and use the wisdom, use the wisdom um, within you, the wisdom from age, from the ages, um, you know, from our ancestors, from people that you talk to, from older people that you can talk to, um, use that wisdom because it's going to help you. It's going to help you through November and it's going to help you through all of your future Aries. I really appreciate you guys checking me out. Happy. I hope you guys had a happy Halloween. As we get to the end of 2017, I wish you guys nothing but the best. Go check out that new moon um, energy in Scorpio so you can do your mant mantras, so you can um, ask the universe for what it is that you need and that you want to create a better you, a better life, and to go deeper, go deeper instead of this, just the surface of things. And Aries, you will have a wonderful month. And uh, a wonderful close to 2016. I thank you guys for checking out Frequency Roll Radio. Deuces.